grinding up mountains in Southern California, exploring the Pacific coast, hauling gear, broken spokes, and all on a bicycle. Having a blast doing it too. How did I get to this point? Let me start with a little background. I got my first bicycle with lots of chrome, a banana seat, and high-rise handlebars. After a few hard crashes learning to ride, I soon fell in love with bicycling. As a teenager, the freedom of going on long-distance rides appealed to me. The idea of touring the Pacific Coast and going across the United States was now firmly in my mind. Now in my 50s, I finally took the step to make it happen, starting with the Pacific Coast. I wouldn't consider myself a bicycling touring expert by any means. I've gained experience by riding a few one to three night trips over the years. These confirmed my appreciation and enjoyment of touring. This tour by far is my longest and most ambitious adventure. I'm planning to ride alone. This presents challenges, but also has advantages. I can be in full control of my experience and pace. I spent many hours researching and planning specific routes. On the coast portion, I followed a lot of the official Pacific Coast route. Although there are many spots where I make my own way, it should work out okay. For nightly stopping points, I identified alternatives so that I can remain flexible. For physical conditioning, I'm normally active and ride my bike often, so I already felt prepared. However, I was deliberate in riding my bicycle more as the departure date approached. For a majority of the nights, I'm planning to stay at campgrounds. There are sections that don't have official campgrounds within range, so I plan to use a hotel or try to find a wild camp option. All right, enough on the background. Let's get on to the trip. I hope you enjoy following along on my journey. The first week is extremely difficult heading south through the mountain ranges east of Los Angeles to the US-Mexico border. I then head north sticking to the coastline of California. Further up, the route takes me inland to visit the Redwoods. Returning to the Pacific Ocean, I continue through Oregon. Finally reaching Astoria, I turn back to Portland, Oregon. If I complete the full route, it will total over 1,800 miles with climbing over 108,000 feet. I figure it will take at least 35 days. Will I make it? I hope so, but I know for sure it will be an adventure. Although I'll be bicycling alone, my wife and I are traveling together from the Portland area by car down to the starting point east of Los Angeles. We are taking about a week with various stops including Reno and Las Vegas. On our way down, we hit sub-freezing temperatures at night. I expect more comfortable weather when riding. At Beatty, Nevada, I was able to squeeze in a short bike ride and visit the ghost town of Rhyolite. After I start riding, my wife heads off to visit friends in Southern California. We plan to meet up at one or two spots when I reach the coast. After that, she'll head home and then I'll be on my own. On the first day of my tour, we drive down Interstate 15 about 225 miles from Las Vegas to Cajun Junction. Due to the drive, I plan for a late afternoon start and a short distance of 12 miles 
This includes about 1200 feet of climbing to reach camp at Silverwood Lake. With this short distance, I expect a relaxing and easy start of the tour. It seems a little weird, pulling off on the side of the road at what seems like a random location. But it feels good to hit the road and finally start riding. First hill climb, coming right out of Cajun Junction. Fire engine passing me here. Something happened up here. I experienced some strong winds right away. It's not too bad. This is a 3% to 4% grade, which isn't bad at all. But I know it gets a lot steeper in, in certain sections. The hills are moderately steep, averaging 4 to 5% grade. For the first half of the ride on Highway 138, the traffic is a constant stream of vehicles. There are wide shoulders, so other than noise, it's not an issue. Fortunately, about halfway up, most of the traffic turned off on another road. This reduced traffic significantly. On the way up, a bunch of fire trucks and emergency units pass by. About midway, there is a brush fire. They seem to have it under control already. It's pretty dry in this area and I can see how even in May, fires can start very easily. You can tell they are diligent about getting there quickly. This makes sense considering the wildfire danger in California. Nearing my destination for today, I get my first glimpse of Silverwood Lake. Judging by the number of queue lanes and signage into the park, it looks like this lake is popular with boaters. I don't know what the peak season is, but it wasn't today as there were very few people or boats in sight. It's super empty in here. Silverwood Lake has hiker-biker campsites. Many of the state parks have these. They're nice because you don't pay full standard campsite rates and you don't need to make reservations. So I think any of these scope it out. The campground was only about 10% full when I got here and I was the only person in the hiker-biker area. But at dusk, a group of at least four hikers had arrived. This park is close to the Pacific Crest Trail, which is popular with hikers. Found another one way back in here. This might be a keeper, as long as the bugs aren't too bad. Okay, I think I found the spot. I'm gonna set up the camp here. Should be good. Like, it's fairly windy here. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the tent and get the campsite going. The grade wasn't too bad. I thought it was gonna be, you know, getting up into the double digits, but it stayed five, six per percent grade most of the way, so it was fine. Uh, there's nobody here at the campsite. Well, there's there's a few people. Uh, there's nobody at the hiker biker sites that I've seen, and there's a lot of sites here, so um, plenty of room at least this time of year. Got my. Uh, um, solar panel going to recharge my uh, uh, Wahoo bike computer. It was uh, pretty low. I forgot to charge it from my last ride, so um, I think there's enough sun. It should easily charge it, no problem, completely up. Okay, I got the campsite set up and the tent set up back there. You can see it. Got all my stuff on the table here. With some miles and climbing now in the books and no issues. I'm off to a good start. 
I feel some relief now that things are underway. I'll get some rest and get ready for a hard day tomorrow. In the next episode, I climb to the rim of the world. Highway Patrol blocks my path. And Big Bear Lake. Be up the road. So...